Imagine what it would be like to have your whole life from the age of seven on made into a documentary. For 14 now middle-aged people in Britain, that's been the story of their lives. It's also our Sunday morning cover story, reported now by Lee Cowan. It looked like any other group of kids in the early 1960s. But this wasn't just a dance party. What do they think about each other? And how would they act together? It was a sociological experiment for a British documentary called Seven Up. The idea was to gather seven-year-olds from widely different backgrounds and look at Britain's class system through their eyes. I have the present tense of Emma. At one end of the extreme, upper-class seven-year-olds, like this trio, attending a boarding school. I read the Financial Times. I read Observer and the Times. What do you like about it? John? Well, I like, I, I usually look at the headlines and then read about them. This dormitory is in a children's home, supported by charity. At the other end of the spectrum, seven-year-olds who were less privileged, like these growing up in a group home. What do you think about rich people? Well, not much. After it first aired back in 1964, the boys and girls, 14 of them in all, became mini celebrities. Their wit and charm, infectious. What do you think about girlfriends at your age? Well, tell me what you think about I've got one, but I don't think much of her. The man who plucked them from obscurity all those years ago is Michael Apted, who back then was just a 22-year-old researcher on the project. It was very funny, the original one, but it was also alarming. You could see that people's views of the world were totally determined by where they were coming from, and those who had somewhat impoverished backgrounds had a very narrow view of the world, and those who were empowered had this grand view, not just of the world, but of their lives. My heart's desire is to see my daddy. I like to see my father occasionally. He was so struck by what they said... I got married because I wanted to have a child. ...that he vowed to track the same group down every seven years ever since. They are now 56. The latest installment, 56 Up, debuts in U.S. theaters this month, the continuation of a series that critic Roger Ebert calls one of the best films of all time. What is it that makes this so compelling? Well, because I think people identify with it. I think you see 13, 14 stories up there. And there's elements in some of them that, you know, hit home in every life. You know, everybody who watches it can identify with something. Maybe I may, I may want to go to a university, but I don't know which one yet. Susie is one of his favorites. When she was seven, the series pried into her thoughts on boys. Tell me, do you have any boyfriends, Susie? Um, yes. And over the years, Apted kept asking, watch. Scotland. Have you got any boyfriends, Susie? What is your attitude towards marriage? Well, I don't know. I, mean, I haven't given it a lot of thought because I'm very, very cynical about it. When I last saw you at 21, you were nervous, you were chain-smoking, you were uptight, and now you seem happy. What's happened to you over these last seven years? I suppose Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> now at 56, she's still married to Rupert with two grown sons and a daughter. I mean, there are great moments in the film, aren't there, when you cut from one generation to another and it's night and day. During the seven years between the films, Apted was Ladies busy making other movies, blockbuster movies. Miss Loretta Lynn. I'm about as old-fashioned as I can He directed Sissy Spacek, her Academy Award-winning performance in Coal Miner's Daughter. He directed Gorillas in the Mist, too, nominated for five Oscars. He even did a James Bond film. As a young man, Paul spent many years in the building trade. But it's these relatively small-budget seven-year retrospectives that Apted considers his life's work. From this Liverpool suburb, we chose Neil. 
and tough work it is. Not all those little lives went the way you'd think or hoped. Take Neil, for example. When I grow up, I want to be an astronaut. But if I can't be an astronaut, I think I'll be a coach driver. By the time Neil was 14, he was planning for college. But by 21, he had dropped out and was working on a construction site. When Apted found him at 28, Neil was homeless, wandering the English countryside. I simply have to find the, the warmest shed I can find. Apted was sympathetic, but he pressed ahead with sometimes piercing questions. Do you worry about your sanity? <laughs> um, other people sometimes worry about it. How tough is that? It's very tough. Sometimes I've asked questions, and I've watched the film with an audience, and the audience gasp, and I think, oh, my God. Sometimes I think I may have gone too far. In the end, though, Neil found his footing. Can I just point out some of the By 42, he ran and was elected to his town's council. Welcome to our service today. By 56, he'd even first. become a lay minister in his church. But having his life's stumbles exposed hasn't been easy for him or any of the Up Series participants. Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> I don't want to answer that. I don't answer those kind of questions. From the start, Nick was a bit reluctant. I thought that one would come up because... By 14, he didn't even look at the camera. By 21, he questioned Apted on camera about the series as a whole. It's just that the limitations of such things as what the audience requires and the time don't allow it to be a real study. Still, Nick has never backed out. Over the years, we've watched him move from his rural farm in the UK here to the US. So the area that I'm looking at is this times this. Becoming a professor at the University of Wisconsin. He got married, had a son, got divorced, and got married again. Is he sexy? Oh, man. <laughs> and Apted's sometimes uncomfortable questions Absolutely. never stop. I mean, he, he's not deliberately setting out to be mean to us, but, you know, making good TV is absolutely his top priority. Have you told Michael how painful it is? Oh, he knows. Thank you oh, very thank much. You. Yes. But he says the pain is worth it. Do you regret doing it as you look no. back on it? No, no, I don't, no. I mean, it, it's interesting. I mean, you know, it, it would be kind of pathetic to opt out of it. E even if it's painful, it's interesting and it's important. Not all of them dislike the process. Little Tony Walker seemed to relish it. I want to be a jockey when I grow up. Yeah, I want to be a jockey when I grow up. He was a roughneck kid from London's East End did indeed become a jockey. I once met Kojak, I picked him up. But by 28, he traded his horse for a London cab. And that's where we found him. I'm very lucky to have that documentation of my life. Not that he's had an easy go of it. At 42, he admitted in the series to having an affair. I have um, I've had regretful behavior various times, but through... No, and that was it. My wife wasn't very happy in the fact that, you know, it came out. And I was wrong, but my wife and I are now we're as strong as ever. The idea of looking at a bunch of people over time and how they evolve, that was a really nifty idea. Apted says he'll keep the series going as long as everyone is willing and healthy. The thought of anyone dying, he says, is too much to bear. People say, how will I deal with it? Well, I, I just don't know. I don't know how I deal with it until I have to. Hopefully, I won't have to deal with it. Hopefully, I'll go first. I'm only a cabbie. I mean, I'm not exactly a movie star. His goal? To keep it going until his film family is in its 80s. Apted will by then the be nearly 100. I figured out when I do 84 up, I'll be 99. So that should be a good swan song, shouldn't it? <laughs> Next, a visit to the land of enchantment.